Right, this is uh, probably one of the oldest samples of aspirin currently in existence today in the UK. It's one of the first samples ever made in England. Aspirin is a very common drug used for pain relief and anti-inflammation and uh, it's very, very old and uh, it's very, very effective. This was given to me by my next door neighbour, Professor Jerry Pattenden, um, who was the professor, Sir Jesse Beat Professor in Nottingham, and this was handed down through the decades from the original Sir Jesse Beat Professor, Frederick Kipping, who made this sample in 1911. So here he is, I got a picture of him, the old guy. Actually, we're gonna make a bit of aspirin, because it's one. Of the, it's actually the first molecule I ever made. Let's get to the lab and crack on with it. Okay, so who's helping me do aspirin? James, do you wanna do aspirin? Someone do something. Okay, I'll do it, I'll start. This is a salicylic acid, this is a starting material, and what we're gonna do is acylate it, but then um, we're gonna use a compound called, uh, a reagent called acetic anhydride. We're gonna add some to there. Then we're going to microwave it, just like we use a microwave to heat up your food, we're going to use a microwave to heat up our molecules. Take a syringe, take uh, some acetic anhydride, I'm going to run it down the flask quite gently. It's going onto the salicylic acid and there's five millilitres there, let's have a shake of that. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of this phosphoric acid, so this is clean, I wouldn't normally, if it, was, it wouldn't have stick anything dirty in there. So I'm going to put a few drops in there, this is going to be a, a catalyst. Is it? It's going to speed up the reaction, so one, two, three, four, five, one for good luck? Yeah, why not? So now we're going to move it over to our microwave. So now we're going to put the flask in the microwave chamber, and uh, it sits in there quite comfortably, put the lid back on. 15 minutes at 75-ish degrees, so we've got to warm it up to get the reaction going. So there we are, it's uh, heating up, you can see it's going from 23, it's getting up there quite quickly. 20, 30 degrees now. So let's go back to the office and we'll talk about the background of aspirin. Well, aspirin's got very close links to Nottingham, and obviously we're in Nottingham University. Um, and you can see Boots, the chemists, or pharmacists, which is now one of the biggest chains in, in the UK, they manufacture aspirin. Let's go back in time. So let's go to this molecule, which is salicylic acid. So what we have here is a benzene ring a carboxylic acid, an acid group here, and an alcohol group here. Now this compound is actually um, derived from a compound from nature, from a willow tree called salicin. And when you ingest salicin, it gets metabolized to salicylic acid, which is actually an anti-inflammatory itself, okay? So for many years, people have been using willow trees or willow bark to treat inflammation and pain. Salicylic acid, which is the precursor to aspirin, when you saw me adding salicylic acid in the flask with acetic anhydride. So what we're going to do to salicylic acid is put this group on it, which is an acetyl group, and we're going to stick it on here. So we're going to swap this hydrogen and put this on there. So I'm going to do that, and this is what's happening in the microwave now. We've taken an acetyl group and capped it onto this oxygen. Now this is aspirin, that's the molecule. But in the body, aspirin inhibits um, uh, the biosynthesis of prostaglandins. Um, it actually inhibits an enzyme, it stops an enzyme from working. So this sits in an enzyme, and what it does, it delivers this group that we just stuck on, and the enzyme takes that group off, and it can't work anymore. So it's as isolated the enzyme, stops it from working. Some molecules cause inflammation and cause pain. So if you can stop the manufacture of these molecules, then uh, it's obviously very good, you know, it's a, it's a good treatment, and aspirin does that. So the acyl group comes off here, but also the remaining part of the salicylic acid, this also sits in the enzyme and also stops it from working. So there's actually two ways. So without the acetyl group, the salicylic acid will have an effect. It will inhibit the enzyme or stop the enzyme from working. But when you deliver this group as well, it's like two for one, it's a bonus. So it was first made by a Frenchman called uh, Charles Frederick Gerhardt in 1853, which is quite a long time ago. But this wasn't really, it was just forgotten really, until Felix Hoffman, who's a chemist at Bayer Pharmaceuticals, he became interested in, uh, in Gerhardt's work on aspirin. And what he did, he, he reproduced Gerhardt's synthesis, and then he went home to his dad, who was suffering from, I think, a headache or inflammation, no, arthritis he, he had, and uh, Hoffman goes, yeah, dad, have some of this. He took it, and hey, presto, it relieved him of his uh, symptoms. And uh, Hoffman thought, great, eureka moment again, you know, he had the, the wise, uh, he made the connection, perhaps we can make money out of this wonder drug, you know, this new molecule. And he went back to Bayer, convinced Bayer to manufacture it, and they patented it in 1900. And then Bayer made an absolute fortune selling aspirin around the world. And in England, we were buying this drug from, from Germany even to treat our people. 
And then all of a sudden, World War One breaks out. We don't become friends with, you know, we fall out of uh, friends with Germany. And then the supply of aspirin obviously stops. So this is where Professor Kipping comes in and Boots Pharmaceuticals. They decide to start manufacturing aspirin for themselves and um, obviously selling it to the Allies. And this is why the plant was started in Nottingham in Beeston in 1915, the production. So right in the beginning of World War I, really. And Boots Pharmaceuticals made quite a lot of money out of this. And this is why Nottingham University has a Professor Boot, or Sir Jesse Boot professorship now, which is uh, the money was uh, given by Boots to start this up. And the, the, actually the land which University of Nottingham were on was donated by Sir Jesse Boot. So, uh, you know, it's, we're actually tied into aspirin, the history of Nottingham is. So that's why I'm quite interested in this wonder drug, <laughs> or this molecule that changed the world. <laughs> this group here, which is one of the warheads of the aspirin, is called an acetal group. So A for acetal. Spur, S-P-I-R, well that comes from the name of the willow plant, which it comes from, and in just happens to be a nice ending, and it's quite commonly used, so aspirin. And that's uh, how the name came about. Okay, so we're ready to take it off the boil. So you saw how it was, it's all undissolved. Now let's take it out and see what it looks like. Ah, oh, it's a clear oil. And I can smell vinegar. That's a good sign. So about 20 milliliters of water. Drop that down the side slowly. Now that, what that'll do is destroy the acetic anhydra that's remaining. Turn the stirrer on a little bit. There we are, get it mixing. Now what we're trying to do, get the aspirin to crystallize out as a solid. It might take a little bit of effort. Sometimes it happens straight away, not always. Now we might have to heat it up. One way to do it really well is to do a crystallization. So we heat the uh, mixture very hot and then we cool it. And during that process, the aspirin should crystallize out and give us some really beautiful looking crystals. Can you see any crystals? What I'll do, I'll swirl it. See if you can see like a snowstorm effect in there. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so sometimes to help speed up crystallization, if you scratch the inside of the flask, sometimes it crashes out. So fingers crossed. You just see the whole the whole flask getting filled with aspirin now. <laughs> it's get, uh, the aspirin's crystallized now, just from scratching it. So that's inducing crystallization. Yeah, <laughs> it's a. This is one of the things that makes chemists really happy in lab when you see things like that. So when I scratch it, you can, you're actually forming a nice surface for the crystals to kind of aggregate on. So it just feels like something to grab onto, really. Well, that's how I look at it. And the... So here it is, I'm gonna swirl the flask, pour the contents into the filter funnel, just hold it. Whoa, do you see that? You got some aspirin. Well, there's quite a lot of it. There's a bottle of aspirin. So here's the sample that Kipping's group made in 1911. And here's a sample I just made in the lab, uh, 2010, almost 100 years between them. And I've got to say, Kipping's sample looks a lot better than mine, despite it being a lot older. There we have it, side by side.